go. Hi. Good evening and welcome to Garblad Games. We're playing Dune, episode two of our House Dargoosh prelude to the incidents in the book Dune, taking place a little while before in the year 10156 on Arrakis. Um, our merry band of space adventurers from the minor house Dargoosh that we made using the house creation rules in the Dune RPG have just arrived on Highliner in orbit around Arrakis and are ready to head down to the surface to begin whatever it is the hell they're going to do when they get there. Let's go the other way around this week. Lois, you go first. Hello, uh, I'm Lewis and I'm playing Dela Dargoosh, the house hopefully heir, who is driven and very intending on becoming the heir. And he's drinking fancy cocktails so that he can look like a fancy lordling. Alden. Good evening. Uh, I will be playing Morgan Graff of the Space Graffs. You may have seen some of my relatives elsewhere. Uh, I will be the junior marshal of House Dargoosh, an ambitious and dangerous house officer keen to climb the ranks. Aaron. Good evening. I am Isaac Roke, the inquisitive to House Dargoosh, a mentat who favors precision and discretion. He will be the one in the shadows helping his friends attain glory. And last but by no means least, Millie. Um, hi, my name's Millie. Uh, my character is Gretchen Riddle, uh, envoy for House Dargoosh, but also a Bene Gesserit. She is polite, however, she can be slightly ultraviolet. I love the idea of slightly ultraviolet. I like the slightly. Slightly, uh, yeah. Oh, I seem to have slightly changed your skull in. I seem to have slightly <laughs> pulled your nose through the back of your head. Yeah, that's Gretchen. So what happened last week? There were no shenanigans. No, none, none. None whatsoever. None. None. Dalu was definitely not behind a plot to get his brothers at each other's throats and I make them both just didn't look have bad. time to visit. And no, Isaac was, was never seen helping him do any of things that he didn't clearly do. I wouldn't dare ask for such a thing. So what happened last week was that Dela arrived back from his swordmaster training on Ginaz, where he'd been training with the experts of House Ginaz to become a swordmaster himself. And as soon as he got home, he got invited to tea with Granny, who said, don't bother unpacking. You're heading off to Arrakis. You're taking these guys with you because they're all competent. I want you to put your face in, find out what's going on. And Dale was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. But while that was happening, Morgan, what did you discover? Uh, well, <clears throat> I believe my shadowy uh, compatriot may have had something to do with it, but we uncovered a dastardly plot to sabotage the shuttle uh, that would be taking us to Arrakis. I engineered nondescript infiltrator had made their way and planted several mm, cunning and explosive devices um, within the shuttle manifest on apprehending the subject uh, they committed suicide through some sort of poison pill and our autopsy performed by our good house doctor discovered various other peculiarities about this would-be infiltrator saboteur we believe them to be bioengineered we have reason to suspect our old enemy house. Dun, yes, dun, House dun. Von Mir, who are religiously mm. unusual in that they worship a kind of fertility cult model, and they are experts in the production of biotech goods, including people. And they're a, a, an enemy of the house now, although formerly they were close allies. However, when Dela's father spurned the offer of a Von Mir bride in exchange for someone he actually liked, Von Mir decided that was it. They were enemies now. And that they had it in for the house. Uh, yeah, so that was last week. And then you got onto a shuttle after stopping everything from exploding, uh, flew up to the Guild Highliner, 
and made your way to Arrakis and you arrived in orbit above the desert planet itself. An almost insignificant brown yellow speck floating in space below the gigantic body of the tube-like highliner in orbit. Almost as soon as you arrive, notifications start pinging up for who's being allowed to disembark, in what order, all governed by orders of precedence in the Lantrad, who's got a bigger house than who, who's allied with who, who's paid the best spicing guild bribes recently. Dela's, not Dela, Dargush's position is not disfavorable, but it's also not particularly favorable. So others are allowed off before you. Now, during the journey, I believe that you were going through a briefing of who you were aware of that was going to be at the party. Mm -hmm. So what I've got for you is a couple of names and a little bit of information. So through Isaac and to Dela, what you know is that obviously the Harkonnens are there. Boo. Because they're handing over to the Fenrings, oh, yeah. who are also going to be there. Uh, apparently Baron Harkonnen has his heir with him at the minute, uh, a delightful young teen by the name of Glossu Raban. Sounds nice. Yeah. The only other major houses present are House Moritani, who are unusually present because they tend to rebel against anything that the Empire says and does. They're not big fans of the Fenrings, but they do quite like the Harkonnens. Uh, Prince Reuben, who is the son of the ruling Duke Moritani, is in attendance as a representative of the major house. Also House Thorvald, uh, the house that provided the emperor with his wife and probably the most outspokenly anti-Atreides house other than the Harkonnens are also present in the body of the Nar Earl Jorg, who's the son of the Earl of the House. Uh, minor houses that are present are some well-known and some less well-known ones. So you've got the Fenrings who are there in the body of Count Hazimir and his wife, the Lady Margot. His longtime allies from House Jongleur, Justine Jongleur, the eldest daughter and second heir of the house and her entourage of entertainers and hangers on. Uh, right, you don't know that they're there. Von Mir are putting in an appearance. Boo. Your old enemies, so you know that they're going to be there. Something to watch out for. Uh, the Nar Baron himself, Krait von Mir, the current heir to the house, is supposedly going to be attending this party. Uh, you've also got House Omora, who are going to be turning up. They're a farming and religious house, not considered terribly important, are probably coming along to try and further their own gains. Uh, house Gunaruks who are an industrial and scientific house turning up as well. There are representatives of the Bene Gesserit, the Spacing Guild. And so it is alleged, a Bene Tlilax is also in attendance. Need to find that Bene Tlilax. Your That's spies have also suggested that there may be a member of House Taisheng there which is worrying because they're, they're one of the houses you don't talk about because their expertise is in Canley and also in Canley. <laughs> Double Canley. Yes, and they're, they're not allied with the house, quite the opposite. So if they are there, they're not mentioned on the manifests or anything, but if they are there, then they could potentially pose a threat to you and your house. But that's who you know is going to be present. And eventually your turn to disembark comes along and your ship is ready to depart. And your pilot 
transfers you down to um, the port at Arakeen, not too far from a squat, fairly ugly brown and black building. Seated clear of the city of Arakeen itself, but at one end of it. Where there is a procession of carriages delivering the noble houses to the party. There are a couple of other house badges there that weren't mentioned in your information. It would appear that House Yash and House Kiwa are also present. Not people you know a great deal about. Fair enough. Uh, I'm going to brief the honour guard before we land in the classic sergeant, shout at them, check their kit, point out something trivial, shout at them some more. Now you're on a guard, you're one of your assets, aren't they? Yes. Well, technically they're not on a guard, they're a recon scout group. Yeah, well, but... yeah. So you have a recon scout moment... group who are dressed up in their best clothes and being told they're an honor guard because they're yep. your soldiers and you know how to <laughs> use them more effectively. Yes. Trying their hardest not to sneak around. <laughs> we just trying we, we just, hard not to sneak. Just stand here at all times. <laughs> People will see, you, I, to see I us. I know it goes against all of your training, but I, I need you to stand there and be bloody obvious and threatening. Right. The yeah. threatening part you can do. That, that's and what did you equip them with last week? Um. Everyone, there was a range of shields. I can't remember if I've got my shopping list with me. Um, uh, I think but, they, they all uh, had a half shield, didn't they? Mm -hmm. And a knife. Half shields, knives. Uh, they, we had long dart weapons. Yes, that's right. Rifles. It was dart rifles, wasn't it, that you went for in the end? Mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah, short blades. Uh, the cloaks, whose name I forget. Um, they look nice. Yeah. So fancy they've got enough their dress on uniforms guard, on with that as well. Decently well equipped. We also have, I think, 12 um, still suits, should we find ourselves going for a jaunt in the desert. Like that's going to happen. Yeah, it's a rackers. Why would we do that? Oh, yeah, smugglers. Yeah, that was it. Um, <laughs> So this procession of vehicles makes its way through the, the town of Arakeen and you can hear water sellers crying out in their traditional way of souk, 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 souk. People clustering around them, purchasing water from them. A few dusty stalls selling fairly dry looking vegetables, some holy iconography people sort of passing through the town. One thing that does strike you, you've never really seen much of it before, is that quite a few of these people have the famed blue in blue eyes that are found only on people who live saturated in the spice found on Arrakis. And the air itself does have that, that faint cinnamon tang, even as far from the desert as Arakeen. And you make your way through the streets in this very slow moving procession of vehicles until you stop at the palace uh, and stopping at well palace if you want to call it that residence is probably more accurate at this stage this is prior to Fenring getting involved and putting extensions and buildings and gardens in to the house making it into a palace so it's kind of a large residence at this stage and stood inside there is the Baron Harkonnen uh athletic looking man in his 40s with a not terribly bright looking teen in the same house colors looks to be about 13 stood next to him kind of staring around looking a little bit bored occasionally he kind of um, grabs him by the head and forces him to focus on people coming through the door and ahead of you several noble families have gone in already uh, there's a bit of a puddle on the floor with some servants wiping the floor where people have gone in and washed their hands and then just splashed on the floor, as you were told is the custom in these parts. Where and is finally, House Von Mir? Von Mir are three houses ahead of you. Well, I don't like that. Well, keeping an eye on them. So it, 
in order the houses that are allowed in it goes Mauritani, Thorvald which is a little bit cheeky the Fenrings are already there then the Jonglers are the first minor house then the Taisheng then the Von Mir then you've got Yash and Kiwa these two that you don't know much about although you are quite impressed Morgan by Kiwa um large well-built very dark-skinned men in the honor guard all wearing a blade at their side all carrying themselves with very very powerful military presence their blades look particularly nice and they are following beautiful military procedure in the way they handle themselves uh, after that there's um house gunnaruks then you and then finally the omora bringing up the rear behind you so you can see all of these people milling around in the foyer uh, once they've washed their hands drinks are being offered to them by house servants in harkonnen livery there are harkonnen banners everywhere really leaving a stamp on this place to show that they own it currently hmm. of course Are we approaching the Harkonnens now, or...? Uh... Well, they did invite you. It would be a bit rude not yeah. to. Oh, well, I mean, are we, are we that far forwards yet? Or... Well, eventually your turn comes, uh, because there's not much to do waiting in a line, so we'll just skip to the bit where you actually step up and represent the house. Hit someone. <laughs> <laughs> That's my job. Uh, old Greek. The Baron and uh, his there. Uh, yes, and who are you again? Uh, house, House Dargouche. Yes, I, I recognise the house, but who are you, young man? I'm Dela Dargouche. You may remember my father, but uh, it's my grandmother, Sabah Dargouche, that uh, sends her regards. And I'll hand him one of the flowers that I stole from her garden. <laughs> Wonderful. How lovely. Do come in. Welcome to Arrakis. Help yourself to refreshments. With a flat. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your hospitality. I'm sure we'll talk later. That is already ignoring you and moving on to the next house. We're not here for House Harkonnen. We're leaving. <laughs> to be fair, they're kind of too big a player for you to worry about at this stage. If you get mixed up with them, it could cause you a lot of trouble. Yeah. But that's not to say you can't. You go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> May well happen. <laughs> so, the foyer of the palace house residence on Arakeen surrounded by nobles and soldiers and agents of all kind just looking around the room it's no secret that some of the people in this room are going to be spies assassins some of them are going to be diplomats some of them are just going to be merchants exactly who's going to be what is difficult to tell house servants are greeting the nobles with each group and showing them off to their quarters Troops are taking away the honor guards and billeting them in whatever nearby accommodation they can. But there are still plenty of people milling around in the foyer waiting to be seen to. So it looks like the major houses are gone, mm -hmm. but all the minor houses are still there. Is there anything any of you want to do? What does my danger sense tell me? Your, your danger sense is kind of going nuts ding, 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 ding. yeah this this whole place like, is outrageously dangerous it's just like oh my head hurts now mm. <laughs> yeah i mean this place is an absolute hotbed however it's unlikely to be direct danger at this point there's going to be a lot of sizing each other up still to do my lord um, Dargouche, is there any particular area of interest you would like me to focus on while we are here in the foyer? Well, uh, perhaps not in the foyer, though. Keep a good eye on everyone, especially their interactions with our friends 
the Von Mir, since they've already given us a present. Um, so Isaac yeah. will be looking over to the Von Mir uh, House representatives and trying to see if there's any connections he can make with whom they're conversing with or any of the subtle body languages that may be passing between them and those who approach their party. Okie dokie. Well, in that case, let's have a look at a social challenge. What we're looking for then in this, as you're, you're observing the Von Mir and seeing what's going on with them, the zones you've got are kind of the room that you're in. The Von Mir are opposed to you, so there is plus two difficulty to anything that you want to be doing with them. Trade and secrets are the assets that you'll be looking at. You can move, you can attack, although those won't be like physical attacks, they'll be more sort of verbal attacks, or it could just be information gathering at this stage. Now, I will uh, I will take a subtle move action to position myself such that I can get a better uh, a better vantage on what they're saying and their body language. So I think that would be uh, duty and move. Yes, and I that have a about right. I have a focus in stealth that allows me to move discreetly. And with my discrete trait, I'd like to reduce that difficulty to one. Okay, so it's a plus one. So you'll be reducing it to, yeah, a difficulty of one to be able to do that. So my target number with duty and move is 14. With my stealth, the focus is seven. Does anybody want me to use any momentum to get some of this info? I would rather like to know. Okay, so I'll use one momentum to give me three done. And I get a 13, an 8, and a 4. So that is two, three, four successes. Which is quite telling. And you notice that the two flunkies who are with the Von Mir representative. They're wearing long robes and their hoods are up. But what you can see is that they've, they've got a very sort of grayish skin and they look almost exactly the same as the Von Mir representative. Alarmingly so, like they've been face sculpted to do so. However, they fill out their robes quite significantly. So they appear to have undergone some aftershop modification, if you like. My Lord Dargouche, clearly the individuals accompanying the Van Mir have had extensive bio modifications and may themselves be a ghoulam. Uh, the other thing that you notice is that the Von Mir have pretty much made a beeline straight for the jongleurs. And the Tei Sheng, who are sort of loitering around near the stairs. They are the other two houses that are most likely to be opposed to your wishes. It appears that they have established a block of minor houses that will stand against our interests on Arrakis. That's uh, only if they can work out what our interests are. But, Quite true. Uh, Ellie, what's um, Gretchen going to do? Um, I'm not sure, actually. I think... Um, I asked Gretchen to do something. Yeah, go for it, yeah. Um, we still need to work out who the Benny Talaxu is. Yes, we do. And maybe your keen uh, Benny Jesuit eye would find that easier than the rest of us. Sure. Um, yeah. So um, maybe very politely make um, 
envoy style introductions. Uh, this is our card. Um, you know, you, you know that kind of stuff. Because yeah, the, 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 this is who we are. This is what we were invited. It's lovely to meet you, um, Dela. So you're going down the high. We're innocent merchants angle. Oh well, yeah, that, <laughs> that's. We were invited, honestly. Yeah, we were. We were invited we're to be here. We are really. <laughs> Look, we got these invites. That throw me out. <laughs> and doing the doing the networking stuff, yeah, that kind of thing. Um, and as I'm doing that, cast my eye or over all of the as many folks as I can. Okay, so that sounds like a communicate test of some kind. What yeah. drive do you want to throw in there with that? I suppose it could be understand if you prefer. I think communicate fits better. Yeah, communicate is a little better um than um that and uh communicating truth or yeah, yeah no, com communicating truth works fine all right so that's that communicate is that that is 11 Ooh, um it's not particularly brilliant at this this is not punching someone so um i'm only mediocre uh is it what we need to find out who this this um this dude is so i would like to spend momentum also and, uh, we have lots so i would like to spend some um and then um let's go um ooh. uh what did i say 11 so i get two successes um and you didn't you didn't increase the crit range the threat range so that 19 is safe yes that's safe that's okay yes you. Help him. <laughs> uh, you nearly miss it on your first part pass because there is no Tleilaxu visibly there. Mm -hmm. uh, but on your second pass, you notice that one of the jonglers um, in a sort of theatre troupe mm -hmm. style of elaborate silks and lounging around and stuff. One of them appears to be a, a grown person. Oh, okay. One of the almost homunculus like small versions of people, someone that's been vat grown to look like a miniature version of another person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't recognize who they're supposed to look like, but they're all dressed up as a circus performer mm -hmm. and seem to be blending in with the junglers, although they aren't one. Very well hidden. Um, I will make note, pass out cards, um, make connections, uh, note people for um, potential blackmail or fake blackmail later, um, and then and then return to to Dela via I don't know the buffet table or something with some some sort of ridiculous alcoholic beverage um, point out like these guys want to buy some lenses these guys don't these guys are probably interested in this and that i think is um is a a, a vat grown artificial thing oh, distaste very... distaste from a bene Gesserit over the like yeah very interesting I imagine Morgan. at some point we'd like to have yes. a Who did you want to eyeball? Mm. Um, well, I have two things I'd like to do. I'd like to... Presumably we're not all trolling around with our troops. So no, I'm no. Gonna... Troops are kind of being sectioned off to one side of the room to be taken away to their place of I'm residence. I'm going to have... Mm, I would say three quarters of them go deal with sweep our quarters um, for any naughtinesses. Uh, do I have within my troop, this may be stretching it, so feel free to say no, uh, a, a particularly capable corporal or someone I might trust to go investigate the local environs? Oof. I think if you want to create an asset such as like that, an you asset can do. That. Now to create an asset... Oh, I got to remember how to do it now. Um, I was just looking at that. Hang on. Um, let's see. Um, 
no that wasn't the right thing um creative. so it's not momentum it might be threat that you can accept a point of threat and then you can create an asset for uh -huh. the seam um yeah if you wish to create a trait um describe the sort of effect you want uh then you must attempt to the skill test with difficulty two if you've managed to create the desired trait creating an asset works in the same way uh, but there are some uh limitations and the created asset ha has a quality of zero um so yep. so it's some sort oh. of skill test with the difficulty of two uh, also you can spend your point of determination uh, that was that was it momentum. yeah that was the spend it wasn't threat yeah, assets created with determination have a basic quality of one or two if you spend two points of momentum to increase the assets quality and they last for the current session. Wow. I don't think we need to push up to two. Um, so, sidebar yeah, huddle. Can... Yeah. Dollar, I would send my capable recon corporal out into the multitude to see if we can make contact with the smuggler tribe. Would this be agreeable to you, Air? It's the graph that would be very much what uh, what we're here for. I thank you for your continued service. It is one of our mission objectives, and I feel it'd be better served if we split our efforts between the political and the uh, mundane. So you're ordering someone out to do that. So let's have a, a roll on getting your corporal go out and do what he needs to do. Corporal Strum. Oh, I was trying to look up places that um, he could be uh, not an Idaho. Does that make sense? <laughs> like, uh, uh, corporal uh, Omaha. Yeah. <laughs> Why he just keeps coming back throughout the centuries. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jason Omaha. So how many <laughs> dice am I rolling? Just remind me, because it's been ooh, a week. So two. 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 Okay. We could spend some momentum to get an extra dice if you want. Um, three. And my difficulty is... So this is, is going to be... Some of your skill and your drive. Uh, well, I would call this battle and duty. Seems fair. Because I'm instructing my troop mm -hmm. uh, to go do their duty. Um if you so, have a trait in either of those that is like telling people what to do uh no uh, okay. no i mean the the drive statement is duty is a heavy weight but mm, not really appropriate no not for this one i'm not sending him to his death probably probably um <laughs> Not on purpose, <laughs> anyway. No, not on purpose, anywho. So, uh, together they're 15, and I rolled a 5 and a 6. So, that's two successes. That's two successes. Uh, he salutes sharply. Uh, turns and if on I his spend heel. my point of determination, that bumps him up to level 1? Is that right? Uh, no. to, to create him as an asset, you have to spend that one point of determination. Mm -hmm. If you spend two okay. more points of momentum, then he becomes a quality 2 asset. For the for the session. Okay, so he comes in as a quality one, or a quality comes zero? in at quality zero. zero. Yeah. For, so for the role you just made, he yep. exists, but he's a zero. Okay. And so he... if you spend your determination and two momentum, he becomes a quality two, which would reduce any difficulties he runs across by up to two. He'll be more successful if you make him quality. Yeah, yeah. I got he that, could but... do the job without it. Um, it's small. We need quality over quantity. <laughs> uh, if you believe that air, then let's spend it to gain it. Oh, so spending our determination, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so that's a determination and two points of momentum. Uh, and each, Corporal Wyoming is useful. Each character has at one point of determination, yeah. so mm -hmm. Morgan spent his. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Corporal Billericky. Uh, I'll give him what... I don't think we have a lot of information on... It was a clan, wasn't it, that we haven't contacted it for 50 years? Clan, so. yeah. um, it is... 
the clan of Seach Abicat. The Fremen of Seach Abicat are a part of the smu are a sort of smuggler clan that you've worked with. Um, we just need them to put out feelers at the moment. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, don't show your house colours unless you're sure you're making contact with the right clan. Stay safe. Report back. Sir? Don't make a mess. Sir? And off he goes. And what was the other thing you said you wanted to do? Uh, I'd like to check out the, was it House Kiwa? House Kiwa, yes. Marshall House. Uh, they're kind of checking you out. They're checking you and Dale office. out as well, as as you're yeah. checking them out. They're not quite as subtle at the checking out as you are. So while you're <laughs> looking at them, they're also looking at you, and you kind of catch catch the eye of um, the chap who's with the leader of House Kiwa. Uh, he's wearing the badge of a swordmaster of Guinness, and he has a sword at his hip, a long blade. He's looking at Graf. Well, he, he's looking at your house. Mm -hmm. Get my staff at them. Politely. Uh, and yes, what you can see is that they clearly produce some top-notch soldiers. Their men are impeccably trained. Um, their uniform is sensible and not overly ostentatious. And they've all got these remarkably nice blades at their hip. Mm. Most of them are just short blades, but this sword is truly something to behold. I think we should yeah. go and introduce ourselves. I was just going to say, Morgan, do you want to go and have a chat? <laughs> I will announce you. Stop, Announces. stop, stop. stop I will, stop, I will stop, stop, not make stop. any eye contact as Morgan announces. Very loudly. Yeah. Um, Behold, these, these gentlemen the are both air. slightly taller than you as you stomp up and you get close enough to them. Great big broad-shouldered chaps. Um, the, the air of this house, his his coat is cut so that it, you, it reveals his pecs on either side of his jacket. And his swordmaster is still at his shoulder. He's almost six and a half feet tall. Very What's the weather like up there? <laughs> And what were you saying, sorry? Honest. <laughs> <laughs> Are your kneecaps uh, off? Uh, because introducing yourself with what's the weather like up there is always the best way to make friends. Well, a proper soldier doesn't care for this fancy talk. And are you a proper soldier, sir? says the sword master chap would you like to find out i will have you know that uh, morgan graf is our staff officer as you can see <laughs> a pleasure to make your acquaintance you are house dagush yes and i believe we have not been introduced yet the sword master steps forward ever since later says he comes with the dawn like a titan. He is Inkosimbokiwa, champion of his house, son of the chief. He is the one who brings the armies of Kiwa to the people. Impressive. Oh. Um, and he stands back down again. And oh. the, the, the Kiwa chap steps up and puts his hand out. He says, please call me Umbo. I'll hold my finger up for one second and I will look to the side to graph. <laughs> uh. <laughs> May I present Dalo Dogush? <laughs> That's Third it. Air. It's very good at bashing things, less good at speeches. It's a pleasure to meet you as well. I am Dalo Dogush. Please oh, call me Umbo. My swordmaster is tremble at his coming. I'm reading something off my palm. <laughs> uh, the winds part his hair. 
Unfortunately, Lions more than they used to. Tremble at his very whistle. My swordmaster was remarking about the quality of the blade you wear. To me, means the house sword. But... Ah, yes. Uh, would you happen to know uh, it's Hakim? Yeah, Hakim Dalbush, swordmaster of Gilead. Ah. He looks over at the swordmaster. He he does a quick nod. He has heard of him. You are also of the Guinness school. Yes, uh, I've recently returned from my training. Most impressive. Most impressive. I am the heir of Kiwa. Uh, we are a military house, but we also produce fine blades. I understand you are a mercantile house and you produce lenses. Well, I'm mostly the heir of uh, Dargouche and <laughs> uh, we do indeed produce lenses, but as you well know, lenses are very important for soldiers. Very true, very true. We use them in a lot of things for range finding and such like. Yes, intelligence is a soldier's best friend. Quite so. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance, House Dargouche. The pleasure has uh, been ours. I'm sure we we'll are honored. speak again later. Perhaps we may have a chance to deal further later in the week. I would very much look forward to that. At that point, some servants are beginning to usher off the Kiwa people as, to their rooms as we break away can i use my understand house politics to try and work out who hates the von Mir the most in the room other than ourselves <laughs> you you can yeah um is that so what house politics so i have a focus understand and Understanding truth is probably your best bet. Yeah, probably, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> How much momentum have we got at the moment? Not much. Yeah. I spent a lot. Just the one. Well, you could use there's it. We'll generate more. Of, well, I'll give it a go. There's well, you can give me a point of threat before. instead, if you prefer. I mean, that would just be making things too interesting for uh, my my little team I don't we, to, you know, we just got another point of oh there we go look. there you go <laughs> thank you i'll use that thanks Beowulf. Um, three successes a 15 an eight and a three three's two successes wow oh, the eight eight is also um like, well the eight, uh, three successes it doesn't really look like anybody particularly cares about the Von Mir. It's, it's like they're not all that well known. However, with the extra successes that you've got there, um, you're now fairly confident that Kiwa will back you. Because from your understanding of the way they've spoken to you and the way they hold themselves, they appear to be not very good at politics, but a quite direct house. And so they will respect strength and honesty, which you know the Von Mir are lacking in. So they're likely to see them as snaky backstabbers, whereas they currently believe you to be honorable and forthright. So if you continue which treating with them in that way, of you're looking at an alliance there. And you know, it's nice that the young Mers aren't overly in the Von Mir camp, because getting in between that would be fun <laughs> also there are worse things to have on your side than a troop of highly trained soldiers Super, with expertly yeah. made blades mm. yeah. I like I'm thinking they would make good allies and interesting opponents well, uh, we'll by this time some house servants approach um, and lead you off to your rooms uh, you have a small suite 
because you brought a larger entourage than many of the other small houses. But a small suite has been provided for you. Although it does look like uh, Morgan and the Mentat might have to double up in one room. No. Oh. That's a spin off <laughs> show, Morgan and the Mentat. No. <laughs> Because they've, the they've, they've made something of yeah. an assumption about your relationship with the house envoy. Shocking. Well, Imagine. that's um, um, unfortunate. <laughs> but uh, does that mean the mentor and and uh, well, the house officer make some sort of assumption about them as well? Yeah. Get yeah. A, get the master well. bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of spaces are there then? Because well, you have a master bedroom, and yeah. then you have two smaller bedrooms. Oh, that's fine. And then a sort of... And then you've got a sort of lounge area in the yeah. middle with uh, a small washroom attached. And by Arrakis standards, it's a generous washroom. By your standards, it's quite small. Mm -hmm. The sort of well, thing you might expect to see on a plane. You get settled in the uh, in the rooms, and I'll uh, I'll get settled here in the lounge. I plan to drink to excess and pass out on the sofa every night. <laughs> the theory being, uh, no one's going to look to stab the air in the neck in on the sofa because they'd be presuming you'd be in one of the bedrooms. No, no one has ever been murdered on a sofa, <laughs> sir. I'm likely to sleep behind the sofa, don't worry. I would like to know where my troop is. Are you asking one of the servants? Yes. She, she takes you over to the small window uh, and points and she says, the, the soldiers are in tents in the grounds out there. They've been kept in separate houses. Your, your tent is the second from the left. But if you like, we can have a banner affixed if you if you would like me to make one. That would be most kind. What is your name? I'm Sophia. Thank you, Sophia. This will be remembered. She looks utterly terrified and <laughs> leaves the room as fast as politeness allows. Isaac would begin to search the room for any kind of uh, bugs and or uh, traps that may have been left for us. Okay, um, what sort of assets and traits and abilities have you got to let you do that? Oh, I would snooper. Well, yeah, we've got a we've got a poison snooper. Um, I would use um, my understand probably. No, uh, discipline uh, with my espionage focus and truth. And then, yeah, our, uh, our sniffer. Okay, so the poison sniffer will give you uh, minus two on the difficulty to do that. Mm. And I'll just go with the standard two dice. Oh, I got then, one momentum at the moment. I'll the difficulty on finding things is variable depending on who po who placed them. Right. So uh, I'll be rolling against a 14 uh, with espionage as a focus. I do have precise as a trait and infiltrator, which may reduce the difficulty up to you. Yeah, I mean, your difficulty is already zero. Okay. <laughs> now so you've just got to not fail okay i got a total i got a three and a ten so Ooh. that's three successes okay um you very very thoroughly check the suite and the rooms top to bottom you go through it with your poison snooper and you know, needless to say there are a couple of dev listening devices there are a couple of viewing devices there are even a few hidden poison pricks dotted about here and there you suspect that some of these are just you know there to weed out the incompetent 
you know, some of those are literally just there to see who's dumb enough to fall for the most basic of tricks. But you've also found the Harkonnen and Fenring listening devices that have been placed in all the rooms, and those weren't just a, they'll find these and be comfortable. You found the, you found the obvious ones and you found the hidden ones. So you suspect that reasonably, you wouldn't want to say that there's nothing coming, but at the minute there's nothing that you don't know about the locations of. Now you can either leave them where they are or remove them. So I, I Isaac subtly walks up to uh, Daler and, and pulls him by his shoulder. Uh, my lord, may I speak with you for a moment? And he takes him into the washroom and turns the water on and then puts his mouth right up against Daler's ear and whispers, I have discovered multiple listening devices and a few small poison needles. I have taken the liberty of disabling the obvious devices. However, both Finring and Harkonnen have placed listening devices within your within the room as well. Do you wish those disabled or do you wish them left on so we can control the information that is being passed to those houses? What rooms are they in? So I discreetly described the locations of each of the devices that I found from Harkonnen and Finring. The obvious ones they'll expect us to do that. Yes, I assumed they would expect us to disable the obvious ones, and that is why I did that. If they think that they have us where they want us, perhaps we can turn this to our advantage. Lovely. I, uh, I'd like to keep them, but we should move them to a location that is more of our choosing. Uh, maybe listening to Graf snore a bit, but uh, use them. And any conversations we need to have that need to be public should happen there. I believe that I can do that for you, my lord. Thank you, Isaac. Millie, what do you want to do? Hmm. Um, well, it seems like Isaac has, Isaac has got... Um, Sorry, I've just realized there's a graph and an Isaac. Isaac, Van and now I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get that out of my head. Um, I've been struggling with that for the last week and a bit. Then let's be grateful <laughs> that um, Daler is called Daler and not Vanda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We'd have had to arrange them on screen then. Yeah. So it's yeah. like Isaac, Vanda, graph. Yeah. Secret June messages. Well, not June, <gasps> you know, That's... secret messages. Secret. June. <laughs> Innuendo. Yeah. That's why I decided to pronounce his name Isaac when I realized the same thing. I was like, let's go Isaac instead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, it looks like Isaac has got, got the searching of the rooms down. Um, uh, so. Um, you could go out of the rooms and go for a wander. Yeah, I'm wondering if that's that's a thing. Like, just just wander around under the the pretense of like, you know, I'm here to make sure um, our our noble our noble born is um, they like their um, their fruit salad to include this. You know that kind of stuff. Like, I need to now make uh, reach out to the kitchens to ensure my noble has what they need. Um, they drink this type of Chardonnay. We brought three cases of it. Make sure it's chilled to this degree. You know, that kind of stuff. Um, and and while I'm doing that, I just, just like see who else is also attending to their noble borns. And, and that. Rather unsurprisingly, in your foray out of the room, by pure coincidence, totally unlikely to have occurred mm -hmm. absolutely surprising to everyone involved um three bene Gesserit sisters three and lady margot fenring happen to all arrive in the same place as you at the same time in terms of seniority here you're you're down the pecking order mm -hmm. but they're sisters well, except for the, the mother. Mm -hmm. There is a mother 
two sisters and then Lady Margot. Um, I will... Um... Justine Jongleur is notably absent despite having some Bene Gesserit training. Okay. Um, I will nod and greet them um, according to their station, so to speak. Um, and um, and say, well, it seems we've come a long way from Wallach 9. What a pleasure to meet some sisters in a faraway place. Are you going to have one of those conversations then? No, I think we'll start with a, a like, we'll see where this goes. And see if there is a need for one of those conversations. Indeed, says the, the mother taking over the conversation. It's a pleasure to see so many sisters out here and to see how well some of you have advanced. The sisterhood is very proud of the work that you do. Uh, so one of my assets that I made in character creation was an old friend. Yes. What do I need to do to make one of these the old friend? Um, you've already got that asset in character creation. If you now want to name either Sister Josephine or Sister Magret as one of your old friends, you are free to do so. All right. So which Josephine? I've written that down before, so I feel like... You've got, um, you've got four Bene Gesserits and you here now. So you've got Lady Margot Fenring. She's not my old friend. She's not your old friend. You've got Mother Tobiah Maria Udan. Okay. who's probably not your old friend because she's a little bit older and further up the pecking order. Mm -hmm. But then you've got her, the two sisters who were attending her, Sister Josephine and Sister Magret. All right, well, let's, I like the name. Um, so let's pick uh, Magret. Um, and um, and just, just nod and be like, it's been a while, friend. Are you uh, adapting well? Very well, and it's a pleasure to see someone so trustworthy in a place so far from home. Uh, uh, you recognise the, the sort of innuendo watchwords that she's dropping there. She's letting the ones who don't know you know that she trusts you to speak in front of. Um, it's a very interesting path we're walking along. I wish if I knew if it was safe well, there was danger ahead, but who knows in situations like this? Um, I'm attending to Lord Dargouche, minor lord, third in line, perhaps ambitions for more. Uh, I was just making my way towards the kitchens of your... And I, I stop because then I realise it's not uh, hers, even though it soon will be hers. Um, of the Harkonnens residence to ensure breakfast is served at the appropriate temperature. Um, my own Very wise, my dear. I respect your initiative and integrity. I'm hoping as well that the staff can be counted on to deliver what is needed in the way that is appreciated. Um, what is it that takes you on this uh, walk through the buildings? Uh, Magret answers, she says, the, the mother wished to get a feel for the grounds so as to know what to expect on these paths that we're on. Wise. Wise. Um, well, I'll gesture back to where our rooms are and be like, you know where to find me. And, um, and bid them on. Oh. Everybody does a little nod, curtsy, combo. Mm-hmm. Um, do I know if this mother is like a truth sayer or anything like that? Do I know her by reputation or is it just? She's not well known. Okay. No, um, they've avoided sending anybody too famous because mm -hmm. they don't want to show favor to the Harkonnens, even though they're technically there for the Fenrings. Yeah. It wouldn't be impossible for her to be a truth sayer, mm -hmm. but also she might just have been someone who's done her time. Yeah. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and I, I will uh, continue on making note that there is a, a large group of Bene Gesserit wandering around. 
wild Bene Gesserit. Roaming the halls. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the kit, you get to the kitchen, mm -hmm. uh, and there are lots and lots of staff running around, many of whom have got the blue in blue eyes. They all appear, appear there's a heightened sense of fear in the kitchen. Mm hmm. They're, they're clearly terrified of something. Is it the cook? We're working in here. It's not the cook. I mean, there's a healthy dose of fear towards the cook, but that's normal fear. That's the kind of, I don't want to screw up sort of fear. That's the, I'm trapped in a room with um, someone who might put a slice of bread on either side of my face and call me an idiot sandwich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's another, there's an undercurrent, a deeper fear. Um, just looking around, can I see what it might be? Is there somebody somebody else out of place or something? Everybody is watching the food that they're preparing like a hawk. Right, okay. Um, I will keep my hands in my robes. Um, do I know if the... The clone, the tank born, the thing. Do I know if they have like specific dietary requirements? Like, because they're constructed, they only eat, like Robocop, they only eat baby food or something like that. Um, probably a closely guarded secret. Mm -hmm. I don't think the Bene Gesserit would necessarily be aware of if Golas have special dietary requirements. They have been seen to eat normal food. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. Whether it nourishes them is a different question. Mm -hmm. um, I will look around or, or look incredibly out of place in a kitchen so that somebody will come and be like, are you lost? In my face. And a young woman does indeed come up to you. Uh, she doesn't appear as nervous as the others. She's got a more relaxed sense to her. Um, there's also, she's physically better built, wiry strength to her. Mm -hmm. She's obviously working in the kitchen, but she's got the deeper blue in blue eyes of a person who's come in from the desert. Difficult to notice unless you know what you're looking for. Okay. Um, I hope you can help me. I have some requests for my lord. My nobleborn has needs that need attending to. Uh, a menu, uh, requirements for his beverage, and so on. Of course, Sayadina. We know the nobleborn have individual needs. I have prepared this small menu for your lord, if you wish to view it. Yes, yes, show me. And she hands you a small leathery pamphlet. I will inspect it. Does it look like something I know Dela will eat? It's... I must have done this a dozen times for the... Oh, God, yeah, yeah. Um, inside, there is just a list of foods, all of which you would have sent ahead, mm -hmm. saying what he likes, what he doesn't like, what's actually being served at the banquet later. Mm -hmm. And there is also a small square of paper that you don't notice until you open it, mm -hmm. uh, tucked inside the spine of the menu Ooh. in a little roll. I will... Um, Clearly designed to drop out when you open the menu. I will not let it drop. Return it to the envelope. Um, and look at a... Is, is this packed by yourself or was there somebody else attending to the, the house dagush? I have seen to it that I will be attending to your house on behalf of the kitchen. I may not prepare your meals, but I am to be your point of contact should you require anything. Can you show me who will prepare? Dela's, um, what would I call him? My, le, lesser Dargoosh? What would he be? What would it? Oh yeah, let's, let's call him Lesser Dargoosh. He's not the heir or anything he's yet, not, is yeah, he? Yeah, he's, a, he, I need, so he'd be he's the, probably Sir Dela. Sir Dela? At this point, isn't he? Lord Dela the Lesser? The Lower? You can call me Dal. 
I'll let you. No, because no, I can't. I mean, she wants to, to use kitchen, your title, your title for other people. So he would be a sir, I imagine, yeah. right. until he becomes so, the nar count or the count. Okay. Sir so Dale and Master of Sorts. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, who will be preparing Sir Dale's food? Uh, unfortunately, my lady, the kitchens are open and all will be pre preparing food. All of the chefs in residence will be preparing all of the meals for all of the guests. Um, might you show me your uh, poison sniffers and your precautions? And she points out that every work surface has a poison sniffer fitted above it. Uh, the doors leading out of the kitchen into the dining room have got poison sniffers built on them. Okay. I, yeah, I will, I will make some show of inspecting all these things and I'm not going to put any faith in them because we're going to have our own, uh, but at least go through the forms of, um, because one day I might need to wander through a kitchen and actually do some stuff. Um, so I'll take some time to do that. I will, um, pass on our version of like the, the, our version of the, um, foods and request something trivial like a, a snack or something like a you know a don't get grumpy before the meal snack for our lord of course. Uh, and she presses an apricot into your hand it's... quite firmly yeah okay i will uh it gives you an innocent smile i will thank her um your name again I'm Abia. Abia. Thank you, Abia. Um, and, hmm. Because I would have been taught the thingy protectiva. She's called me uh, Sayadina. There must be some sort of, like, f farewell or something I would know from, from BG school that I can use to my advantage. Because they're all manipulative witches. <laughs> Um, so I've literally just been uh, I've been listening to June on the audiobook and I've just had the bit where she meets the Shadout Mapes yes uh, which is, yeah which is a wonderful bit of, of Jessica being manipulative it's brilliant um, but yeah there must be some sort of even if it's off the mark do you want me to make a roll for that to see if I get it right or, or anything because um, I want to make because there's a lot yeah, do you know what? There is a lot of context and subtext going on in the conversation you just had there as well. Yeah. So if you want to make an understanding and faith check is probably the best one to go for there. No, no, Ben, it's not. It's my worst set of stats. <laughs> Give me some <coughs> momentum. Sorry. It's uh, all right. What was that about momentum? It's all right. Sorry, chat. Um, <laughs> momentum. <laughs> we don't play like that anymore. You've got to have the momentum there yeah. before you can use it. No fluffing time to let momentum uh, sneak We in. have one left, so we can spend it against... Yeah. Uh, understanding and faith would be a target number of nine for me. Ooh. Wow. Well, well, possible. No, no, it's fine. I will just, um, I will just have a go. Um, There's always threat. There's always threat, yeah. It's true. Um, oh, no. I missed the mark. I get a, an 11, which is so close. Oh, and so then an close. 18. No, I, no, I clearly... This is not Gretchen's... Um, not her forte. This no. is this is the class that she didn't do well in. Yeah. She wasn't... You know, PE, she was great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> PE, um, manners, punching, punching um, handing out business cards... Uh, all of those were really good. Uh, PR, good P at that. PR, yeah. Propaganda core, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I, I don't Remembering know. Remembering the ancient greetings from the mission area protective her, less so. Less so, yeah. So, so I don't know. I didn't, I didn't make, um, I didn't cause, um, what do they call them in this one? Conflict? Complication. Complication. I didn't call it, cause a complication, but it's just rubbish. Yeah, I mean, she's, she's not, she's a little disappointed that you, you didn't, say the right thing mm -hmm. but not devastated yeah. okay and then i will swoosh as a bene Gesserit is want um and return to uh, our suite um yeah and when you get back to your suite that's when you realize that um abicat 
hmm. is the Fremen word for apricot. Oh. So the, the Fremen that you're due to be making contact with are effectively from the apricot house or the apricot nice. town. Nice. So the fact that she pressed an apricot into your hand was kind of a subtle hint. Yeah. One apricot. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, when I return, I will um, throw the apricot to Morgan. I'm not giving it to Dale. It could be poisoned. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Uh, well, I don't say that. I just just throw you a an apricot. Um, and then, um, for, uh, I will, my lord, um, Isaac, um, I believe I have found a contact, um, and I will open the menu very carefully here so that whatever falls out and then the spider that tries to bite my face off, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that kind of this thing. This is not an aliens game. Oh, sure. <laughs> Honest. You joke. Everything descends into alien. You yeah. joke. <laughs> but, yeah, oh, this, this tiny roll of thin paper drops out into your hand. I will. Almost, uh, almost small enough that you could attach it to a bird's leg if oh. the birds here weren't the kind of psychotic, blood-drinking, sturge creatures that they are. Yeah. Have you seen the worms they eat? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um... So um, I will um, open the paper, uh, take a quick look at it, um, and then pass it to Isaac. It is a message written in the Fremen dialect, um, welcoming you to Arrakis and assuring you that a meeting will be held soon. Hmm that you can trust the messenger who gave you this. And there is a, a, a stylized picture of an apricot tree almost watermarked into the paper. I thought you was going to say apricot then and it just looks like a booty <laughs> at the end of it. Boot, 80 apricot emoji at the end. Sorry, I'm 12 again. I'm sorry, I apologize. So that um, deep shafting yesterday. Yes, definitely. <laughs> They were talking about Alien. Just folks who were watching were talking oh. about Alien. Sorry. <laughs> Just in case. Um... Yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> I'll black off the dark. Mm. Not, on, not on Twitch. Not, Joy, not at all. No, God, black, uh, only anyway, no. on, Arrakis, fans. on Arrakis. Back on Arrakis. Back. Now, oh, while man. Gretchen has been gone, um, some of the household servants have come by asking if you want to deliver anything to any of the other houses. Uh, there have been a few business cards delivered to you from them in passing. Probably would like Isaac to... would be dealing with them. Um, I get Isaac some information. Uh, I would like to make use of my Shown contact. Uh -huh. And now that we know the group of houses that are here, I would like to subtly ask him to uh, to provide us with a fair list of, of the dealings between the different houses so that we can get a look at who's got trade uh, agreements with who and who's using trade agreements as a means to move other things between each other. But effectively what you've received from these messengers are um, the business cards of houses Yash, Kiwa, Amora and Gunaruks. Mm. Notably absent are Von Mir, Taisheng and Jongler. Yeah. I'll deal with Jongler later. So there is, there's sort of overtures from those four houses. Von Mir, mm. ambitions on Von Mir. But uh, we definitely want to give our new friends a little something. 
what did we bring in the way what did morgan bring in the way of uh knives and the like and weapons i wish martial gifts mm. well, i know the gretchen Actually, packed a good pr package but i'm I not have, sure we have too much in the excess of equipment sir i have a better idea um morgan can i yes. borrow a knife a short blade yes and then why I'll, well i'm gonna remove one of my paired Gilas knives and uh i'll ask isaac to ensure that that gets delivered to our new friends a very uh, honorable gift and very generous sir seems like the kind of thing they'd like i would be most happy to deliver it so who else sent us uh you've also uh, received um just sort of business cards introductory notes from house yash who are they appear to be statistical analysis analysts hmm. um they're they're a maths house Beautiful. the the nar baroness the heir of the house who's come is herself a mentat and has a staff of two other mentats with her so they are clearly smart cookies and it looks like statistics data and political analysis are their thing uh, you've got house Amora, who are a farming and philosophical house so they're, they're lovely pastoral home world continents full of grains that they farm and grow which gives them plenty of time for sort of sitting back and thinking about philosophy now they're presumably here to find out more about the fremen religion uh, but they're also open to having conversations with other houses about trade. House Gunnaruks um, are an industrial and scientific house. They're experts in chemistry and the, the manufacture of ornithopters. Who's in charge of House Gunnarok? Or who's here for them? Well, that's interesting. They haven't got a noble title on them. Deputy Overseer Clavia Gunnarooks. So she has the name of the house on her, but doesn't have a noble title as going by Deputy Overseer. So interesting. Yeah. Uh, the Amora representative is a sir like yourself. Uh, so clearly not a direct heir. The Kiwa so heir is time. here and the Yash yeah. heir is here. Yeah. To the statistical house, I want to send um, one of grandmother's flowers that I bought, but the one that has the most symmetrical pattern that seems the most mathematically circular. <laughs> Yo, dudes, so we the... heard you were nerds, so we sent you a yeah. math flower. Yeah, we sent you the most math level we had. They, um, actually, you know what? Make a, do, 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 communicate and power roll. Power flower. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't think my statement really applies. What's your statement? Power offers the true shield for those I care about. Yeah, it doesn't really work, it does it? Really. No. So I have a 10. That's going to go well. 50 50. Yeah. Averages. Yeah. No. No, it wasn't. <laughs> no, it <isn't. laughs> Apparently. 17s. Okay, so you send them a flower. <laughs> yeah. They look at it and go, Mur. Yeah. I did we'll send them send some statistical data. I mean, <laughs> maybe the agrarian philosophers would have enjoyed a plant more, sir. But can I get some information on the various trade contracts from... Uh... So you want to put in a call to your Chome contact yeah. and see what information you can get there. That's going to take a while to arrive, but yes, you yeah, can certainly request that's... the information. We're, we're in early so Gretchen days. returns... Thanks for the apricot. You're welcome. Enjoy it. I'm going to run the poison snooper over it. 
uh, it registers as being poisonous. Is that because it's an apricot or because it's actually poisonous? <laughs> That's very cyanide cool. Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna eat and it, it, anyway. is, it is cyanide that it is registering on the poison snooper. But you eat the apricot, uh, and as long as you don't eat the pit, there are no negative consequences. For oh, I won't do the dwarf thing and just eat the whole thing then. <laughs> <laughs> we could ferment it first, and then we could use it, use it to poison some. <laughs> I will hand the stone to Isaac and say, I think this is more your department than mine. Uh, poison is a subtle person's craft. What are you Maybe saying? I'll take it under advisement. Mm. I'm saying your choice to hand it off was the correct one. Thank you. No, thank you, my friend. Okay, so everybody's all settled in to the suite. Is there anything that you want to do in the interim, or are you waiting for dinner that evening? Uh, Morgan uh, will go and check on the troops. And Isaac will approach Daler. I have a an associate, uh, or I should say our house has an associate embedded within the Harkonnens uh, entourage uh, here on the planet. I would like to go make contact with her and see if she might be able to keep her eyes and ears open for us uh, during the week-long festival. And this would be my courtesan uh, asset from character creation. Yes, I remember. That's me. So her name is Eliasa Suntu, and she is a bond slave and a bond slave in the Harkonnen household, working as a courtesan uh, for those uh, that the Harkonnens favor. She's been promised by our house that is, if she's able to provide valuable information, she may eventually disappear from the Harkonnens. Uh, residents and a woman bearing a very strong resemblance to her may reappear someday on a forced moon as a teacher or something. So Isaac will quietly and uh, discreetly make his way through uh, through the the premises uh, until he can find a way that he can make contact with her. Okay, um, yes. Well, she's an existing asset of yours, so I will let right. you make contact because it's a thing that, getting used to the idea of the sort of narrative aspect of mm -hmm. some of the, the ways assets can be used. So yes, you're able to reach your asset and make contact. Ilyasa, it is good to see you. I believe that at the end of this week, you may find yourself spirited away from this life, if perhaps you can be of great service to the House Dargouche. If you're willing to try, are you willing to try, Ilyasa? At this stage, Mentat, I would do more than try. They're disgusting. I want to get away from them. Well then, my friend, all you need do is bend an ear, open an eye. I would like to know of the dealings between House Harkonnen and House Van Meer and two other minor houses. And I give her the names of the minor houses that seem to be creating that triumvirate with House Van Meer. Uh, the Taisheng and the Jonglers. Thank you. I would like to know any information they have about dealings they are having between one another, any dealings they're having with Har House Harkonnen, and any plans or plots they have against our house. Any leverage that I can find to use to foil their imaginations or protect my lord would go a very long way in ensuring that when we leave Arrakis, you leave Arrakis. I'll do whatever I can. I can tell you straight away that the acrobats, the theater troupe, whatever you want to call them, the junglers, half of them are spies, assassins, operatives of some kind. 
they lounge around like lazy athletes and hedonists, but they train every morning before dawn. And where do they train, my friend? There's a small yard on the second roof. As for if the you... others, I don't know anything about them yet. The Taisheng, the Von Mir. But I know the Jonglers have been looking forward to working with Taishengs. And I believe the Von Mir have a relationship that they're looking at with the Harkonnens. They're doing everything they can to get in with them. Excellent. They brought a significant amount of gifts. Very interesting. Do continue to keep your ears and eyes open, and we shall meet uh, discreetly. Uh, I should and I give tell her a, you as well that some of the gifts that the Von Mir have brought for the Harkonnens may make my access less useful if they choose to make use of them instead of my talents. Ah. I understand. That does sound like something that the Van Meer would bring to the Harkonnens. Are they simply slaves to be given, or are they more manufactured gifts? If they're slaves, they're simpletons. They all seem a bit off, though. I don't think that they're normal. Very interesting. Well, still, do what you can for us, and I will see to it that the promise that House Dargush made to you is fulfilled. Particularly if you hear more about what the junglers are training to accomplish here, that would be very potent information indeed. I'll do what I can. I must go before they see me missing. Thank you, my friend. We shall be in contact. over her face and jets off into the night. And Isaac situates his, situates his uh, cybers hood and, and slips back into the shadows. Uh, Graf goes out to check on the troops. They have hung a cloak on a banner pole outside of their tent. It's a, a long, heavy duty tent. This isn't like a, a couple of little tents. This is a uh, one very large tent fitted out for the entire troop and there is one for each of the houses the ones for the major houses also appear to be fitted with air conditioning whereas the ones for the minor houses less so not so much how are the men looking it's hot sir it's damn hot but we're fine everybody's eyeing up everybody else out here a lot of people spoiling for a fight who do you reckon? Oh, who do I reckon will go for it first? I think someone's yep. going to try and manipulate keywords into going for it. I I would like to see. They look like solid blokes, but I, I would say, sir, that it will be someone else pushing them into doing something. It will be done to make agree. them look bad. Someone's going to tell someone to do something stupid to make someone else look bad. It's a good thought. We would look to ally with House Kiwa, so in the event of anything happening, you're on their side. Do you uh, want me to send some of the boys around with some drinks and some cards? Not too many drinks. No. And not your gesture. cards, either. Lisa? Wouldn't dream of it. Yeah. Let's make friends first before we fleece them. So we're making friends then. We're making friends with them. Yes. Make friends. Anybody to watch? Well, Von Mir, but you knew that. Knew that, yeah. Jonglers. Jonglers? They're actors. They haven't really got soldiers to speak of. They've got bloody circus tents. Sir. They're tricksy. Right, you are complicated twisty folk 
Just because something looks innocuous doesn't mean that it is. I'll keep an eye then, sir. Just remember your art of war, soldier. Sir? Where's the corporal? Has he turned up yet? Still not back, sir. Okay. Have him report to me when he does. Will do. Anything right. else you need? No, sir. We're all good. You three. Uh, take some drinks. Take some cards. Over to Kiwa. Introduce. Make friends. If you can, drill together in the morning as well. we'll Try and be that. impressive. Well, we're not straight up hand-to-hand -hand soldiers where we can avoid it, sir. I think they'll Impressed. probably hand us our asses. <laughs> You're slippery. In a stand-up fight, well. they're big bastards and they'll kick our backsides. Then don't give them a stand-up fight. But be honourable. Yes. And make friends. Yes. Okay. Fight casual. <laughs> <laughs> right, you are, sir. Let me know if you need anything else. I'll come touch he, you um, later. He, he, can, he has a little bit of a look around and stands up and rips off a parade ground salute for you. Just in case anyone's watching. I will return the same. But he also winks as you leave. <laughs> <laughs> Love that troops. <laughs> so anybody else got any other plans between now and dinner? Yes. Uh, Dayla would like to ask someone from the kitchen to bring a few different vases over to try out to put the flowers in. Okay, you are brought a selection of small vases. They're a little bit confused as to what yeah. you want at first, so they don't really bring you vases. There's a, what you notice about the vases is that some of them are glasses. Um, some of them seem to be um, crystal decanters. Uh, at least a few of them seem to be measuring cylinders from the science lab. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'm going to fill each of them with uh, our water that we have on us and uh, try the flowers in each of them and then eventually decide upon the smallest one and I'll go, you can take those away. This will do. The, the serving girl who's holding the tray looks at you like you're absolutely mad. It's, yes, sir. And she leaves at speed. Carefully oh, with this tray, she leaves so she knows that <laughs> I know what I've done. <laughs> if you can't look after the servants, then we don't deserve them. a princely gift indeed. And our allies are few. <laughs> So there's a few hours left of the day. Uh, most people seem to stay in their quarters, relax. They're adjusting to the heat of Arrakis and it is very oppressive. There are fans in your rooms. The windows can be sealed if you want to and you pretty much do because it is outrageously hot. Even in the cool of the afternoon in the city, which is in the cool of the mountain basin, it's still hotter than the hottest summer's day you're used to back on Darga on the beach. But as evening comes on, it cools very quickly. That's and a servant comes to the door. Uh, Master Dayla, Sir Dayla, my apologies. I've been sent to summon you and your party for the banquet. Thank you. We'll be along directly. And, uh, I'll close the door, go back in and see if everyone else is ready. Yeah. Been ready for the last hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's been pacing. He's so ready. 
It's yeah. to stop pacing every once in a while to repolish the bottom of his boots in case the pacing has made them not shiny anymore. <laughs> pacing and kind of twirling the mace. <laughs> Figure of eights, backflips. <laughs> I know who we're going to put at the head of the uh, Dogush parade. <laughs> <laughs> Well, have my traditional yeah. flying marsupial hat on. Nice. The Don House Officer. Elegant black fur. Don't forget to announce me. Yes, Sir Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> and you are led down to the staircase that leads down into the dining hall. And the dining hall is enormous. <laughs> There are a number of tables set up. There's the head table, and then several lesser tables facing sideways onto it in the room. Uh, you and your entourage are separated as you're led to the head table, and they are directed to one of the lesser tables out in the hall. You are permitted to keep an attendant with you, if you wish. Uh, this is probably something we'll have discussed beforehand. Who feels most confident in a soiree, high society dining area? I'm going to nudge Gretchen. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Isaac would have definitely recommended that you take the Bay Jesuit with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely the BG. I will stand behind and be on voyage. <laughs> And I will swan in, pretending to be every bit the uh, cavalier possible future. So heir. most of the houses are already there by the time you arrive, because you're a little bit more laid back and loose than the rest of them. The junglers still haven't arrived, because they're probably waiting for everybody else to have arrived before they even bother making their entrance. Mm -hmm. You're going to be fashionably late you've got to be fashionably later than everybody else we were both sort of looking at each other in the hallway <laughs> <laughs> no okay, after I'll you no after you <laughs> and so the tables have been arranged in such a way you've been sat with your sorry your staff have been sat with house amora and house gunarooks on the last table, you're fairly far down the head table between the representatives of those two houses as well. Um, you're sat opposite the representative of House Kiwa, though they're on another table to your, their minions are on a different table to your minions. A wave gratuitously at the <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I love you. Uh, yes, there does appear to be on, on the kiddie tables, there is very definitely um, a conspiracy table because the junglers, the Taisheng and the Von Mir are on one table, the Yash and the Kiwa are on another table, the Amora, the Gunnaruks and the Dargush are on the final table. So what Fenring's... you're saying is it's like Slytherin, Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw? Yeah. Is what you're saying. We got the nerd table? Okay. Yeah, probably. Yes, yeah, you, you've been guys. you've been sat on the Hufflepuff table effectively because you've got the the philosophical farmers and the um, chemistry nerds. Yeah. Explain the flower to them. <laughs> <laughs> I will let Isa cover that. Um, I would rather talk about agrarian produce. <laughs> and the yes. Baron Harkonnen stomach. stands up mm. when everybody's present and taps on his glass a beautiful crystal clear belling sound rings out and says friends nobles and attendants of course welcome to arrakis the jewel of the empire it is our great honor as the representative and the baron of house harkonnen to welcome you all to this our holding as we transfer it under the careful stewardship of our good friends Count Fenring, here to honour us with his presence this week and with the presence of his lovely wife, 
the Lady Margot. We have a wonderful week planned, a celebration to last for several days. This is merely the beginning. We have many great and wonderful spectacles for you to behold, including, should you wish it, such fantastic activities as a troop display from our own house troops and any other house troops that wish to participate. Notice the key was all kind of... <laughs> uh, we'll be taking my, my beloved nephew and heir on his first worm hunt and you're welcome to join us for that. And all through the week there will be salons, parties, banquets, and myriad delights for you to behold. Of course, myriad opportunities as well for trade and negotiations between all of our fine houses, that we may all serve the empire in the best way we can. Welcome to you all. And he bows with a slight nod. Von Mir start clapping. Everybody else starts to join in, sort of one by one. I'm just going to bellow out in proper drill sergeant voice. To the Emperor! Everybody stands, raises their glass of water. Sits oh, back yes. down again. Absolutely. Also at the table with you, up at the high table, you have got some other representatives. So joining you at the head table is the mother of the Bene Gesserit and one of the sisters serving as her attendant. Uh, there is a spacing agent, spacing guild agent there. Uh, a water trader is present at each of the staff tables, not at the high table. As are some wealthy looking locals who you'd hesitate to call smugglers, but at least in public. And also sat with you at the high table is a grey-skinned gentleman in a large robe with sharpened teeth, sat quite close to Von Mir. Mm. And they appear to be in deep discussion as the evening wears on. So this is dinner, and this is very much a social challenge. How do you wish to play this out? What moves do you wish to open up with how do you want to proceed? Um, so who we sat with? You're sat at the head table. Yeah. With Gretchen behind you as your advisor, food taster, hmm. whatever you need. The others are sat at one of the alleged kiddie tables. Ooh, gosh. Also then, um... Other than the major houses, is closest to Feng, Feng Ring. Other in, than the major houses, the closest not, to not the Fenring. sitting, but, like, has the most connections to... Them. The Jonglers, they're, like, very old friends. Jongler and Fenring are very closely allied houses. One down from the junglers. So, what do you want to do then, Louis? Louis? I want to. Hmm. Shall we be ballsy and try and just outright charm the junglers a bit? I'm going to go for it. Because I really want to. Oh, okay. Over the Von Mir. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it feels like my Benny Jessera is not quite so. <laughs> You're the nobleborn. You You're are the. No to advise me. <laughs> to do so in public would suggest that your intentions are incorrect. In other words, I'm not going to stop you doing what you want to do in the game. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're going to go and charm some junglers. We will charm some junglers, and if it goes wrong, I'll punch them in the nads. 
It won't. It will. It will be okay. I so hope. all forms of diplomacy. Yes, <laughs> the two major forms of diplomacy. Charming and punching. <laughs> yes, <laughs> same coin. So you wish to make make a move at the house jungler. So you've got Justine Jungler, who is the second heir of the house, representing. Uh, her entourage are spread loosely along one table, although they're eating sparingly because they're getting up to perform shortly. She's chatting and laughing with the Fenrings like they go way back, and occasionally she'll lean across and she'll nudge the Taishengs, who are being very quiet, very cagey, and not really saying anything. And she does make a few comments towards the Von Mears. But you're going to try and approach, eh? How are you going to go about this? <laughs> Hello. Uh, how close are we sat from the jungle? I've got a monocle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, the monocle is actually part of it. Wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, how, how close are we sat? From them and what's you're actually quite close to the junglers because um you've got two sides to the table so there, there's probably about 20 seats at this table yeah. with the harkonnens and the fen rings at the head so you're about halfway down so you'll be sort of talking across some of the others but if you talk across the taishengs Nobody's really going to notice because they're not really talking. They're just kind of picking yeah. at their food a little bit. Quite dull. Who's sort of directly next to me towards the junglers? Directly next to you, you've got the Nar Baroness of House Yash. Okay. With uh, the red stained yeah. mark on her lip from the juice of Sappho. And um, what are the junglers most known for? They're most known the for their entertainers. Jungler. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I'll sort of uh, discuss that with the Nar Baroness. <laughs> but loud enough so that they could probably hear me and in such a manner that as a mentat or something similar, she'll feel inclined to provide information. Ah. Okay. So let's make a... Communicate each. Communicate and... No oh, power. Hmm. She's trying to manipulate things. Things, people. Ooh. Do you mind if I grab a momentum, people? No, I'll take it. Oh, all right. Because I uh, communicate in power. I'm on ten. Well, I had eleven before and failed. So, so take the momentum and and yeah. go. Just seeing if there's any Or you can always give a... Can drive in, like, oh, yeah, you, you could know. always give threat instead. Although I suppose yeah. my ambition is improve my house's standing and in so doing my own, which is duty. So perhaps it could be duty and communicate. As I'm really... I'll take duty I'm and communicate because this is about improving wage. your... Yeah. This is about improving your house's standing. Mm. That one. So uh, that would be a 12. My house needs a worthy heir. Does that count? My dry, uh, statement? Not at this point. I mean, maybe if you were offering marriage. We'll get there. <laughs> not on the uh, first not, lunch. Yeah, not on the first No, lunch. no, we've got an entire week. Don't worry. 12, 6, and 5. So I passed all of them. Ooh. Three successes. Okay, so you, you open up a conversation with the Nar Baroness Tara Yash of House Yash about the Jonglers. So you're talking about them so as to gauge their interest in what's going on. So you're using someone else as a means to get to them. 
And then our Baroness has uh, lots of information that she's able to share. She doesn't know much about the artistic side of things, but her analysis of the house is astonishingly insightful. She is very, very good at this. She's clearly a political strategist and analyst of some skill and talent. And she can tell you quite a lot about the house and the way they operate and who they're allied with and how long they've been allied with them. She's able to provide you with dates of alliances and how far back things extend, relationships between who's married to who, who's courted who. So she gives you a pretty good lowdown on why the jonglers are close with the Fen Rings. Probably information overload. It's like a, a it's like listening to a, an autistic kid who's into baseball cards telling you about their favorite baseball team. Just bombards you with information. But you so, do sort of yeah. draw the attention of the junglers as a result. And I'm going to use a point of threat at this stage. Ooh. Yes. Oh, wow. That's a really bad roll. I'm going to use another point of threat. You don't need to. Oh, no, I, don't I really to. am, because that was a horrible roll. Seriously, I got a 19, a 20, and a 16. On a social challenge from a social house. There we go, that's a little bit more like it. So um, Justine Jongler says something to the Fenrings, which causes Count Fenring to um, raise his hand to his mouth and very quickly hide a, a bit of a giggle. Uh, a wry smile appears on the face of one of the Taishings and the Baron Harkonnen laughs out loud. Uh, clearly she's just said something quite pithy and cutting about you. Been rude now. It, yeah. Just because they laugh doesn't mean that it is not all good because, I mean, what could possibly be bad to say about them? <laughs> <laughs> ah. uh, Gretchen, wow. is there anything you want to do up at the top table? Um. Yeah, the jungler woman has, has basically just sort of called him uh, a bit of a fanboy and accused him of um, obviously fancying her. Maybe he does. Maybe he uh, does. Oh, she's very attractive. Oh, yeah. Mm. The house needs, needs a good air. No. <laughs> Needs a good I mean, I feel like my use of the monocle is going to change now. That <laughs> <laughs> but that was kind of a more of a bless him. He's, in, he's enthusiastic, the poor love, but he's not quite in the same league. Um, I I don't have anything cutting to come back with. I'm not I'm not that. Except a knife. Just yeah, I've got a someone. bodkin. Just lead over and punch her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Dodge this. Thought you were a dancer. Not so pretty now, are you? Uh, <laughs> Maybe not the best diplomacy. Maybe not. Um, I um, um, what other? Hmm, how much do I know about um, Lady Margot? Not a lot. She is a full-on Bene Gesserit adept. Mm -hmm. uh, she's been married to Count Fenring very recently. But he seems to genuinely really like her and she seems to quite like him as well so there is some affection between them um, however it's quite well known among your order that he is incapable of fathering children mm -hmm. okay um in my um in my research in my pre uh arrakis arrival did i did i know of anything that might be a, a good gift for the Lady Margot? She likes flowers, actually. I, I know that. I know that. I was just asking. Yeah, I was so... Fishing. Um, <laughs> uh, I will... Um... She's the reason that there are gardens in the house mm -hmm. in Arakeen, oh, in the, the palace, mm -hmm. because Fenring builds them for her. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. So um, of the flowers that are left from from the garden. Um, oh, no. Yeah, I will. We can have this one. I will take it. Um, I'll take it down um, and um, approach. <laughs> I will approach Count Fenring and say, um, uh, noble sir, uh, House Dargouche, via uh, Sedela, uh, offers you a gift that is rare, a flower for, for the Lady Margot, for you to provide for her. So it's a gift, so he can bring joy to his wife. I will provide that um, and um, offer him, um, if you wish, I could provide communication lines so that you may know the best propagation for this this flower, um, and and provide it a gesture to to Dela, um, and uh, give a look to <laughs> to the uh, jungler, um, and uh, leave. Yeah. I I will at that point wink at Gretchen. At- Ignore jungler and look at <laughs> yeah. Fenring. Yeah, Count Fenring favours you with a nod from further up the table. And when he passes the flower to his wife, she's obviously overjoyed to receive it. Mm-hmm. Clearly something that she was worried she wasn't going to see many of on Arrakis. Meanwhile, Isaac and Morgan. On the fun tables. I am not talking to Isaac. So Isaac will slowly start making his way, not so much around the tables of the minor houses, but around the servants, and begin to slowly drop crumbs of information in servants' ears, implying that the mentat, and I've got my cybus hood up, so my features are look different to everyone, implying that the mentat of House Dargouche is dissatisfied with his position within the house and may be willing to trade information or services for the opportunity in another house. Mm, Trying to flush out anybody who might actually be coming at House Dargouche. Yeah, I like it. That's very sneaky. Go on then. What are you rolling for that? So I think um, it would be dis, uh, discipline because it's kind of espionage, um, yeah. and t- truth because my statement is discipline I is more sort con- of stamina and willpower. This is more of an understanding thing, I think. Okay, I can do understand too, um, yeah. and truth because my statement is I act to control the truth. Seems to work. Yes. So that's uh, on fourteen, and. I don't think we have any momentum, so... We've just got one. Oh, you guys want me to use it? Or... Yeah, if you want to use it, I'm, I'm all good with it. All right, so three dice on 14. Oh, I got a two and an eight, so my focus... No, it doesn't really apply, so uh, two successes. Nice. Two successes. This is the servants of the other houses rather than the servants of the Harkonnens. Correct. Services of all the minor houses, just slowly, like little pieces of information here and there. Um, so something that it would take someone with a little bit of political acumen to actually pull together. Exactly. Another spy from one of the minor houses might be able, would be able to pull the information together, but it wouldn't be easy. So it's not an obvious ploy. Okay. So yeah, you go around doing that and people are listening. Uh, heads being nodded. As you go round the servants of the various houses, what you you're going to get a picture of who's there. So the junglers, they've they've got this group of tumblers and acrobats. Uh, the Taisheng have some specialists, a small number thereof, and they seem to be sort of coming and going from the meal at various intervals. So you can't tell exactly how many of them there are. Not as many as there are of any of the other houses. Von Mir, uh, they've got troops, same as you. The servants that are with Crate Von Mir are up at the high table with him, but sort of further back so as to not upset anybody at the high table. The key word, they've got soldiers and their swordmaster. 
and, and they're eating and drinking and laughing and chatting with one another. The Omora have got a small contingent of soldiers and they're currently being led by a Mentat who's up at the high table with Sir Quinla. And the Gunaruks have got a large number of technicians and scientists, a few soldiers and guards with them. And what you do notice about them is that they, their soldiers have some like pipes or tubes connecting them to some of their clothing. Almost like a drug delivery system. People who are very interested in hearing this information are the water traders and the smugglers. The smugglers have been sat with your table in between them. They're at one of the tables at one end, one, one at the table at the other end, because there appears to be a very, very poorly hidden rivalry between them. And the Spacing Guild agent is sat at the table that you're at and is also showing a lot of interest in this idea that there may be an inn to one of the houses. So it's not just the houses that are intrigued by your proposition, but also some of the other factions that are present. Morgan, what do you want to do? You and your soldiers are sat on a table with a bunch of soldiers from the farming continent uh, and a bunch of scientists and technicians and soldiers from the Gunaruks. Um, well, I'm not going to do charm, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I will, I am interested in the uh, in the Gunaruks uh, for their, more for their machinery and their transportation. You said there were experts in ornithopters yes they're they're ornithopter builders par excellence uh so this is of interest for obviously my troop is a they're actually quite troop. stylish as well they have a kind of dragonfly model hmm. that their ornithopters are built on uh, a lot of the ones that are used on arrakis look a bit more like a housefly or the harkonnen ones which look um, almost like a, a jet in many ways well, whereas the the gunaruks <laughs> ones are more like a dragonfly and the wings kind we of brought our own, didn't we? yes you did bring your own again it's uh, more so like can... the sort of fly version that's more common here so we can have a bit of a chat about ornithopters yeah and they're quite keen to chat with you and they, they rattle off specifications and details and stuff that many of which go right over your head I mean, your, your eyes uh -huh. do occasionally get drawn to the these these tubes on the soldiers armor every once in a while i'm gonna ask what your armor is intriguing our own is quite simple and functional uh, hmm. apart from the marsupial hat uh, which is a it's badge a of office very fine hat very fine hat indeed it's also very hot I, I imagine it would be especially on a on a place like this yes, yes. uh well v of the gunaruks our, our armor is uh enhances our physical capabilities uh, we have increased strengths as a result of some of the fibers that are woven within, uh, and also the tubes act um, to deliver a special cocktail of drugs of our own devising um, to the system, which keeps sleep at bay, uh, enhances reflexes. Uh, why they, they say that uh, the cocktail mix can render a Gunaruk soldier able to stand against somebody even trained in severing way. Bring it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I have a companion who would like to test that assertion. That would be wonderful. But, We've not had a chance to test it against an actual warrior. Well, should our houses come to some sort of cord, then I'm sure that we can help each other out in such a manner. Yes, that would be fascinating. Uh, and you're, yourself, your own house, you are the lens people. You make the glasses. Yes, we are house Dargouche. We see what others might miss. Yes, yes. We, we use some of your lenses in the opticals for the cameras on our softers. They are very good. It would be okay. wonderful to have maybe a discussion uh, between the people who are in charge so that they can 
uh, do the politicking. Ah, yes, I'm sure this can be arranged. Obviously, I am not of the politicking. No, no, I think the politicking is it's a big table over there. There's, uh, this is the tables for, for the children of the house, yeah? Well, no, they're over there. <laughs> no, no, I, you know, like, like in when you have the big family dinner and there's a separate table for the children, I, I meant in this sort of way. No, you don't have that on your world? No. Oh, that's, 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 I'm terribly sorry. I, I have misunderstood. In my world, we release the young into the forest and they fend for themselves. And they no, come I'm back joking! Back, but <laughs> they have the hat? <laughs> yes, they must return with a hat. And he laughs along <laughs> with you. Oh, you're, you're a very funny man, Sergeant Graf. A, a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Thank you. What was your name? Uh, I am Heinrich. Dr. Heinrich, to be fair. I'm a... Ah. I, I may be wearing the uniform, but uh, I, I'm also a research scientist. Ah, what are you researching? I'm trying to see if there is a way that with the improved reflexes and the controls on our ornithopters, whether or not we can increase the um, speed to turn ratio for flight so that we can gain greater aerial superiority. So if you make your pilot faster, then you can make the craft faster. Yeah, at the minute the limit for how fast a, a vehicle can travel is the pilot himself, because if the pilot is exposed to too much thrust, then they pass out and then crash and boom. Yes. Interesting. Okay, so that that's dinner. Just drinks. <laughs> Everyone's like, okay. <laughs> uh, by the by, about the fourth course, uh, the junglers get up and they do uh, a fancy theatrical dance with lots of silks swooshing everywhere. Uh, it's very difficult to keep track of. Keeping my beady eyes on them. Mm. Um. This uh, grey-skinned, toothy person that's with the, the Von Mears. That's a Tleilaxu. Yeah, 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 I know. I know. <laughs> um, the, uh, I would like to um, watch them um, whilst they are eating and talking. I want to gauge, like, the mood between the two because they, they, to me, seem like direct competitors. Because obviously Von Mir makes genetic things and they make genetic abominations. Um, so between them, it seems odd that they're next to each other and Pally. Yeah. Um, so I it would, does. I would like to... Like that, doesn't it? Yeah, I would like to, to watch them and um, see if it's, a, a f you know, the typical two-faced of either how either um group um or if it's genuine okay um i suppose this would be something like truth and communicate or truth yeah, and that understand seems fine. i think truth. either of those understand would probably be a bit better because you're reading people rather than talking to them yeah okay i'm not very Always good at that seems some more momentum <laughs> it's okay i will give it a go this is like i need to get 10 or lower um oh i got an 18 and a 7 so i get one success okay it would appear that um the vodmir are almost courting the tleilaxu the the relationship appears to be mentor to student rather than competitors so it's like the Tleilaxu have taught the Von Mir some of the techniques that they've become well known for. All right. I need to, I will file that away because then I need to let them know that they have tried to use that knowledge to attempt an assassination upon uh, House Dargouche. Um, and we should 
Um, oh, that would be interesting. If Gretchen could establish a moment where we may in the future have a little chat with the uh, Clay Laksu, that would be yeah, nice either. as well. So, um, yeah, we... Um... Oh, who's the house here that um, do Canley? The, the Candy Candy guys. That's yeah. Taishengs. I, yeah. I'm I not will... talking to them. No, no, I will talk to them. <laughs> right, I will, I will oh, find God. one of the. Yeah, lower... they're the ones not talking to people. I will find one of the lower people from the the, the Taishengs. Is this while the dance is going on and there's yeah, all like like flashy quietly. silks flying and stuff going on? Um, I will, um, I will find them. I will um, introduce myself politely um uh because I, I am polite and uh, uh uh good evening i trust you are free to speak i i wonder whether you consult um discreetly on the acts of canley and its forms the the Taishing agent that you're talking to is almost an in, entirely a blank they're utterly average looking mm -hmm seemingly completely agender mm -hmm. their face is thoroughly unremarkable uh, fine features thin bones delicate hands but a strength in their body that you can it's almost sense they're very comfortable and confident in their own physicality that uh, the house is of course happy to consult on matters considering canley how may I assist? Well, a, an interesting situation where I believe a house has attempted an assassination yet failed. I'm wondering what the forms would be to, to retaliate or to um, issue a challenge. Uh, what, must one first present the evidence of such to the emperor or to, would it serve to present to perhaps, if we were in a situation such as this, to the Lord Harkonnen, the Baron Harkonnen? Or, or should can, this level of canley be dealt with just between houses? An interesting proposition. Uh, a fleeting glimpse darts across the agent's face that suggests that they have a little bit more of an idea of what you're talking about than they probably should. Traditionally, such things should really be dealt with between houses or through the contracting of a specialist. Depending on how your house wished to approach such matters, it could range anything from a symbolic gesture to, so, to show that you know what was done through to an issue of challenge. Although an issue of challenge may be premature at this time, perhaps it would be best to wait and see if anything else is forthcoming unless you have active evidence that you could use currently to send a message to your rival hmm. to indicate knowledge of the action uh, are you able to arrange as um in between a meeting between the two houses to uh facilitate this understanding It is something that could be considered in exchange for well for a minor consideration hmm, interesting would you perhaps arrange and i'll i'll then go to like timetabling scheduling like arrange for a, <laughs> arrange for one of their agents to meet with my noble um for this sort of thing rather than that kind of stuff let me consult with the nar barrett not the nar baron the nar count and i shall contact you tomorrow with further information excellent um and i will um on my way um other other von mir and the the um Hylaxu still chatting and sharing time. 
Uh, they've separated out and gone their separate ways and are talking to different people. I would like everybody at this stage to make a battle. Yes. Yes. And truth check. Oh, does it have to be truth? It does. What kind of battle is it? Yes. What kind of battle? <laughs> It's it's more a battle assassination or or battle of goddamn ninjas. So if you've got a trait of assassination or goddamn ninjas, that'll work. Not, not dirty fighting. We'll not take that one. Uh, weirding way does count. Dirty fighting doesn't count. Oh, boom. instead of instead of battle, could I use understand? Since my focus in understand is a danger sense. Yes, you can oh. then. I also have my constantly watching. Does that help? Yes, you're constantly watching. All right. No, actually, you're constantly difficulty. watching counts against it. It makes it harder. Durr. Yeah, your difficulty is increased because of you're constantly watching. Okay, oh, because of my... I got a... Fused now. A three and an eight. 18. So, but the three... Uh, with my danger sense as a focus gives me two successes. Okay, so you've got two successes, Louis. I've got a Lewis. one and a 12, which is three successes. Three successes. Uh, Millie, I, I get the feeling that things did not go well for you. I rolled two 20s. Oh, Ooh, that's double complications. complications. Oh, shit. Now, Ben, I'm just going to ask, do we, do we need all of those successes, or can we... Just use one yeah, success and burn really the others to mine. You, you the will need the successes. Well okay, just check. I'm afraid. I got um, Well, Dela doesn't need all three of his. You need both of yours, though. Okay. How many did How Morgan many get? Two. Two. So all those of you with two successes, so you've got a spare. At the crescendo of the dance, you notice a flurry of blades flung at the high table just a storm of glittering shards go spiraling and arcing their way towards the top table can i now Dayla, you got to you at three successes yeah. so you realize that none of these blades are heading for you you are in no danger uh, and in I'm... fact neither is anybody else uh... still i want to dance out in front of the fin rings and intercept at least one of them. Okay. Sort of. uh, Isaac, okay. you get a feeling that it's actually a part of the performance. Okay. Yeah. Mm. That these blades are coming flying out of nowhere towards the top table. Morgan, you also got two successes. What do you want to do about this flurry of blades? You realise that... <sighs> You're constantly watching, so you're scanning everything all the time, looking for it. And it's like many of these actors and dancers and jugglers have all gone for a knife at the same time and all thrown it at the same time in a kind of coordinated effort. There's, you, you sense showmanship is involved rather than assassination. Mm. However, Gretchen, mm. the weirding way acts through you mm. and with you as you see these blades darting forwards it's clearly an assassination attempt you must intercept it in some way what are you going to do your complications in context here are that this is an attack by the jonglers on everyone at the top table um well, I will um, make sure um, my Lord Dargouche does not get murderated. Okay, he's actually throwing himself towards the blades. Why would he you do that? <laughs> Why would you do that? He's he a, a noble. Very cavalier plan. <laughs> yeah, but I rolled double complications. You did. Oh, so you are going so to interpose yourself. Me. Are you going to interpose yourself or are you going to move him out of the way? Um, I guess I will. Um, yeah, I need to I need to either move him out of the way or um, get in front of him, which, are, you know, bodyguard, take the bullet style thing. OK, so that's, that's, a, rings, that's going to be a fighting role for both of you to see who. No, 
I'll throw myself in front. <laughs> well, Dayla's plan is actually to sort of intercept one of them. Yeah, but then, her plan is to sort of intercept yeah. you. Yeah. Um, so this, this... So it's, it's, I think battle and duty is what we're looking for here for you, yeah. Christian. So, so and... fifteen or less then. Yeah, and for Dayla, I think it's it's battle and power that we're looking for. Okay. Does my dueling and short blades count? No, it does not. Um, does weirding way count? Yes, oh, it does. Oh, it doesn't matter actually. I don't know why that I answered that. Um, what does the remind me what the statement on my drive does? Oh, it doesn't. No, actually, it doesn't matter because it's it's understanding is not a necessary, uh, only <laughs> obedience. Uh, yes. So I don't need to understand what Dayla is doing. You don't need doing. to understand what's happening. You just need to obey. And the obey is keep you protect him and keep yeah. him alive. Yeah. yeah. Um, I get two That's successes. Right. Yeah, I've got two successes as well. So the two of you kind of crash together in this weird dance of just getting in the wayness. So <laughs> effectively, Millie, your successes cancel out his. Uh -huh. grab you go, nice you go to grab one of the blades, and your hand is moved out of the way by Gretchen, protecting you from being impaled. It would have been perfect. You'd have landed in just the right place and plucked one out of the air. However, oh, I was going to cut one of the Fenring's food with it as well. <laughs> <laughs> Justine Jongler, apparently unaware of all of this going on around her, pops up into a one-handed handstand and picks up a wooden board from the seat she was sitting on and swipes it in a smooth arc through the air, catching every single blade as they impact it. Mm. And she switches back down to sit down again and puts the blade down in front of the Fenrings and the Harkonnens like an offering with a flourish. Isaac le leans over to Morgan and goes, uh, apparently, uh, our uh, associates were not aware that that was part of the act. How unfortunate for us. <laughs> mm, tricks so, of folk. Yeah, there's there's a round of applause from the Harkonnens and the Fenrings and everybody else quickly joins in because nobody knew what was going on except the jonglers, apparently. And so there was this moment of stunned surprise from everybody. Loads of troops have stood up on the floor. The, the Kiwa are in uproar and outrage the what's his title the Inkosi has leapt onto the table and is sprinting down it as these blades are all caught food going everywhere the Amora has dropped himself down under the table in an attempt to protect himself You see, I want to say something like they are graceful, oh. but they are stupid. <laughs> uh, and I'll clap wildly in my hand and I'll say, well, you can't fault a Bene Gesserit for trying to save their lord. I will stand to the back of the table <laughs> and just seethe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they played you. Yeah. They played everybody. Like, that was another chess. Kidneys out through a face. <laughs> <laughs> Dodge this. I feel like at this point I'm going to let you. Yeah. <laughs> Morgan is marking each one of those jumpers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. Yeah. I'm going to try and pick out who the true lead is. Because if there's one I want to punch in the face, it's that one. The rest I can leave to the key one. The list of face punching seems to be growing. <laughs> <laughs> Got a book. It's all, all here. <laughs> it's all in the book. <laughs> uh, shortly thereafter, dinner draws to a close. There, there's coffee and spirits. That's, yeah. That's the bit Dana wants to make use of. I am going to turn to the deputy overseer. Who was next to me who I was talking to I was like, would you mind accompanying me for a second and I will attempt to lead her off towards... of course she says it will be my honour 
towards my Flicks her heels together as she, she walks off with you arm in arm. That's uh, no place like home. She's about four inches taller than you and, and built. I'm going to move over to uh, Fenring's wife and pull out the monocle and make sure that the jongleurs and the Vonnie are listening as well. And I'll say the advantage of such power in optics has uh, led us to look for the beauty that is the most sublime. You can uh, perhaps you can find it here in this flower and I'll hand her the monocle to examine it. And then I'll say the only problem with such optics is it also sees the flaws in lesser things and I'll make sure that the jongleurs and vomiers hear that. <laughs> And with such a parting line, we're going, I'm going to call scene. Uh, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you very much, players, for coming along and setting up such wonderful little social encounters. Next week, we'll be out and about a little bit more in the streets of Arakeen and possibly even heading into the desert, depending on how fast things flow. We shall see. Uh, thanks, Punch chap, for Punch participating in everything. Punch a worm. Punch a worm. A worm. Punch a worm. <laughs> Punch sure. a worm with a jongleur. Punch a jongleur <laughs> into a worm. Yeah, Ooh. I can go for that. Now you're talking. Wouldn't it be a shame if you slipped and fell right into the giant sandworm's gullet? Oh, look. You fell out Not... the ornithopter. <laughs> Not so graceful now, are you? Oh. <laughs> uh, no, it's just... If only I'd have practiced more at the catching classes at, at Wallach. Well, never mind. The problem with artists of that type is that they cannot move without rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> They're so sensitive. Sometimes it just gets too much for them. So we've made it to Arrakis. We've had our first few encounters with the other houses who are present. And where it goes from here, who knows? Many tales are told on the sands of Arrakis. Mm. Let's see what the tale of House Dargoosh brings next week. Thank you very much. Next week, join us on Garbled Games on Monday for Spectaculars, mm -hmm. Character Creation, Eldritch Mysteries. Mm -hmm. uh, it's looking interesting so far. Yeah. It might be a very small starting group that grows like a snowball as it rolls down the hill of superhero-ness. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, we have got Coriolis Coriolis I think uh, it's it's the um the the Trojan armadillo the Trojan armadillo <laughs> is the is the mission we're on we've given yep. ourselves we're going to try and sneak into somebody's base and and cause murder um causing murder i think is going to be the easiest half of that the sneaking may present us more of a challenge yeah uh, also on tuesday is spectaculars again this time the north american collective i uh, you guys are starting aren't you yep. yeah issue, done your world building it, you're ready to go yeah issue one issue did, one of street the premiere Light of the covenant the street light night is that what the team is called the covenant that is correct nice nice and then wednesday we've got once upon a time in the old world our woofrup 4e show uh, it was starting to turn into aaron week on god yeah. isn't it <laughs> oh. hey hagen did did mess up a lot of storm vermin last week before he was knocked unconscious sadly but uh, it was it was a lot of fun if you haven't if you haven't listened to it or watched it check it out yeah thursday we've got alien rpg colonial marines frontier war operation deep shaft part two yep Yep. And then Friday, we're back again for June RPG, House Dargoosh, continuing uh, adventures yay. of our house on the sands of Arrakis. We're in a week. Don't what forget week. to check out our various social medias, our Discord, our YouTube, our Patreon, all of those good things. But <gasps> other than that, it's been good night, good week from Garblag Games, and we'll see you next week. Good night. Uh...
Cheers. Good night.